I'm a member of the Committee 100. Uh, uh, my name is Dominic Ng, and I'm the President, CEO, and Chairman of East West Bank. Uh, I'm up here only for the purpose to introduce our keynote speaker. And it is my pleasure to introduce uh, Bob Aker, Chairman and CEO of Mattel, the largest toys company in the world. As a matter of fact, a uh, few years ago when Bob recruited me, to join the board of Mattel, uh, his recruiting pitch was his board meetings was a lot more fun than mine because uh, instead of like going through loans and deposits, uh, the Mattel's board meetings, we w went through the new line of toys every single year. And that was a lot of fun. In fact, I enjoyed very much. And clearly, once I got on the board, I really felt that it was a lot more fun than my board meeting. Uh, until last year. Suddenly, it was two dozen lawyers, you know, sitting around in the boardroom, you know, telling me about what lead paint is, you know. And uh, I learned so much about lead paint that I'm now an expert. In addition to that, we spend so much money on legal fees, I told Bob that we should start a new law firm called Bobby, Ken, and Elmo. And I bet you that law firm was going to be able to be immediately become the top 10 biggest law firms in Los Angeles. Uh, as a matter of fact, you know, just learning about the lead paint and all that kind of stuff, I realized that when, when I grew up as a kid in Hong Kong, I got myself so much exposed to lead paint that uh, I wonder what I would be like if I grew up lead paint free. <laughs> would I be a much smarter guy? You know, I had this discussion with my father, and I said, what would I be, you know, if I, had I not been, you know, tainted with lead paint when I was a kid, you know? He said, well, you'd be so smart that you may become a politician, and that's pretty scary. <laughs> but all kidding aside, I think Bob uh, uh, went through, a, obviously, a very interesting challenge last year and one of the good things for me to sleep good at night is that with him, you know, having high integrity and know what the right thing to do, I always know he would do the right thing. And uh, we went through the storm, and I think I feel pretty comfortable that Mattel have done a very good job in terms of doing the right thing. And Bob came to Los Angeles eight years ago. In fact, uh, after spending 23 years at Kraft Food, it was the largest uh, packaged food company in the world. And uh, before that, you know, he was in his graduate school at uh, Northwestern. And besides working hard at Mattel, Bob's also served on the board of McDonald and uh, also at UCLA Anderson School, Northwestern Graduate School, Kellogg School. And locally, he also on the board of the Welfare Council, Town Hall, Asia Society, and so forth. So without further ado, and since you know, time is of essence, uh, let us give a well, warm welcome to Bob Ecker. That was cute, thank you. Thank you, Dominic, that was cute. Of course, he's on the audit committee and the comp committee, so we do more than talk toys. We do work them pretty hard. Hey, how are you today? Thank you for being here. You know, Dominic invited me to be here, and I asked him what he wanted me to talk about, and he said, why don't you talk about what you went through last summer? So, uh, how I spent my summer vacation. <laughs> for the last 51 consecutive years, I've gone to a fabulous place, gone camping with my family uh, in a place in Michigan called Silver Lake State Park. And that's my uh, three generations of Eckert boys, my 91-year-old father, my 19-year-old son, and me at our annual camping trip in Michigan. The problem, of course, last year is the annual camping trip lasted a little less than two days. Because here's what we really spent our summer doing. You know, you have a lot of outraged parents this morning. They're wondering how this happened, what you're doing about it, and why they should have any confidence in Mattel toys from this point forward. A lawsuit was filed yesterday in federal court here in Manhattan, a class action lawsuit. Do you anticipate hearing about more class action lawsuits to come? How concerned are continues? We keep seeing faulty items coming out of China 
and clearly toys one of the biggest uh, imports that we talk about do you think this is going to be an ongoing problem how do you prevent it and the list goes on and on Bob how did this happen this is a big deal Christy the Wall Street Journal raised this question is Mattel this giant toy maker keeping dangerous problems a secret with millions of recall toys coming from China is it time to play it safe and buy American is that what is going on here an effort to save money is safety ever being compromised now, this comes on the heels of another recall by Mattel of, of toys with lead paint manufactured in China two different manufacturers both from China were already getting emails saying ask this guy whether it's time to stop getting the toys manufactured in China let me say something to the Mattel CEO if your division Fisher Price wants to argue over lead content with consumers union and other consumer activist groups you're a fool sir because this is about the safety of our children and your profits don't really mean a damn thing to us because this is really first before it's a marketplace mister CEO it is a nation there's nothing like getting personally addressed by Lou Dobbs on television <laughs> and, and a couple of them let me answer the questions every once in a while let me give you some background on, on, first of all, Mattel and what happened. We are the largest toy company in the world with sales of about $6 billion. We've been doing toys for 75 years. We're in 150 countries. We have a global supply chain. About 80% of the world's toys are made in China, and probably more than 70% of our toys are made in China. You know our brands like Barbie and Fisher Price and Hot Wheels and Elmo and American Girl and the like. Toy recalls are not a new phenomenon. We generally have two or three a year. We make about 8,000 new products every year, and if you think about it, you never buy the same toy twice. So we are in the new products business, and every once in a while we get them wrong and we have a recall. They are typically for small parts issues. Uh, toys for children under the age of three, we have to be very concerned about choking hazards. So if some part can become dislodged and create a choking hazard, that's what creates most of the recalls. They're not big deals, and they typically don't generate a lot of uh, fanfare and notoriety. Last year was a little bit different. It started with recalls from two of our competitors. One was uh, a maker of Thomas the Tank train engine, um, a lead paint recall, and we in the toy industry have been testing for lead paint for dozens of years, and we have very few failures, but that was a failure in the spring of last year. And the second one was a completely different issue. Another competitor had a, a small magnet issue. We began using in toys five or six years ago these very small, high-powered magnets. In fact, if you want to know what I'm talking about, try and take your name tag off. <laughs> and, and we use magnets that are this powerful that are even smaller. They create a lot of magic in toys. They allow the toys to do things that we couldn't otherwise have them do. And every once in a while, a magnet becomes dislodged. And we in the toy industry would think of that, well, that could be a choking hazard, a small parts issue. But what happened with this particular toy is a child ingested one of the magnets. And then, unfortunately, a few minutes later, ingested a second magnet. And as these things do, they work very hard to connect to one another. And by the time they did, the child's intestine had uh, become a real problem and the child died. So all of a sudden, we in the toy business aren't thinking about a choking hazard. We're thinking about as rare as this could occur, that is to ingest two of these magnets time apart. This is a big deal and we've got to really start working on this issue. So that's what started this thing going. We had our own recall for lead paint uh, in August, early August, August the 2nd, right during our Silver Lake, Michigan camping trip. Um, and the issue here was one of our retail customers in Europe called us and said, you had a product that failed one of our lead paint tests. And uh, we then do what we always do in these cases, which is let's go back and see who made the product, where was it made, when was it made, what other products were made there over what period of time, and we do a lot of intensive testing. And by the time we get down to the root cause of knowing what paint was used on what toys, we had a recall of 83 products in early August. That was a pretty big deal for Mattel. But it was one isolated issue, or so we thought. Because the big news now is, less than two weeks later, we have a second big recall. 
And this is unprecedented in the case of Mattel. We had two things happen here. One was we had another lead paint issue on one other item as we intensified our testing and, and searching for lead paint. And the second thing is we decided at this time to recall all of the toys we had made with these small, high-powered magnets glued to the plastic toy. We recalled five years' worth of toys. And even though people don't keep their toys for five years, we thought this was such an important issue that we wanted to make sure we got the old toys back and replace them with toys that used new technology to embed the magnet in the plastic. 